Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to interact with you and to present some of the things we are making in my group. We are located in Malaga, in the south of Spain, and uh, we have been developing different kind of techniques and applications for the last 25 years, working with a group of people located and based there in Malaga, but also in connection to many people in Europe, in America, and in Asia. So what we, we are doing there is uh, roughly speaking, uh, solving complex problems in different domains. So after many years uh, testing different problems in different domains, we arrived to focus and stress in the last years more on smart cities, because smart cities are a nice platform and a nice arena for going there and putting your knowledge on techniques to solve problems in a very challenging area. So uh, my talk today will be on intelligent systems in general for smart cities. So I will present you some ideas, some of the context, then I will present you some of the results we already had on this domain, some of the present things we are doing, and some of the ideas in general and some of the future projects we are uh, making related to uh, smart cities. Um, well, uh, Defining smart cities is complex because it's not well known. It's a hot topic today and not everything is well known and there are not that many definitions of what you have inside smart city. But there are some big pictures and, and keywords that you can uh, know and, and, and use there. One of the first things I should talk about is holistic. I think that uh, many of us are uh, used to go for precise applications, small applications. Being small doesn't mean uh, being easy. Probably they are very complex and difficult. But one of the points very important in smart cities is thinking wide and thinking in connection to other things that you usually don't think about then. So being holistic in the techniques and the applications you are doing is very important in everything you are doing in smart cities. Uh, the technology is very important also in smart cities. So I can imagine that many of you are, are focusing on the techniques and the algorithms and the abstractions that you have in problems, which is definitely an important way to go. But you cannot forget about the technology when you go in to smart city. This means you need to, go to know on uh, communications, on sensors, you need to know on computers, you need to know on the hardware background that you are using in the city itself. So that's very important also when you go in to smart cities. Informatics in general are inside every single part of this. So I think that as a computer engineer myself, uh, uh, I found that it's very uh, easy in general compared to other domains to understand the different problems you have in the city. Because it's very common for people in computer science to deal with different uh, topics and areas, not just in the application itself, but also from the theoretical point of view. We are dealing with networking, databases, uh, communications, um, uh, let's say theoretical analysis of techniques, um, storage, and many other things. So for us, it's very normal to deal with the uh, ecosystem you have in the city itself. Uh, so you can find this in every single part. Telecoms are uh, very uh, ubiquitous. You can find it in, in all places because you are communicating all times information and getting information from the city. This is in a natural manner multidisciplinary. So this means that you need to get used to understand, talk, and define projects and ideas to people that are in very different domains with respect to your own domain. So this means that you need some skills, not just networking and understanding other people, but going to the technical details and technical needs that other uh, experts in other domains have. And this is not very simple. This is, a, again, a challenge. I think that all of them are challenges for you to go to a smart city. Uh, city sense is also on the loop. So this means that you, you, you don't go only for, uh, let's say, um, um, an abstract user or, or a client in general or similar things. You are targeting citizens in the city. So you need to know about social issues of what you are doing. You need to think on how the things you are creating in the uh, university are going to be translated to final users like uh, your brother, your mother, your friend, or people that does, don't know anything about computer science or technology themselves. So this is a big issue because at the end, if you are meant to have uh, success, you need to think in a really final user. And this means even 
graphical interfaces and how things in Android look like. And people are not used to take into account all these things together in one single project or one single research project. So uh, I think that for smart cities, all these parts need to be taken into account. Otherwise, you are just going for small applications or small impact in them. And then you have managers, and this is a big issue also, because when you, when you are dealing with a city, as you can imagine, there are as many cities are as many persons in the world. So some of them are very large, some of them are very small, some are easy to access and, and deal with, some other are really difficult, officially oriented, they want everything on paper, they want everything under law, and uh, there are many things to uh, make before a, even a small step if is, making, is made in the, in the city itself, okay? So I think that all these parts are very important in smart cities. Uh, they, they are not uh, a clear definition of the, uh, let's say, parts or domains in which you can work in a smart city, but this one coming from uh, IBM is one uh, larger enough and wider enough to give you an idea, because uh, for sure right now most people are talking about any kind of mobility, smart mobility, like uh, uh, rail system, airports, traffic, and many others. Some other people are going not just for smart mobility, but also for energy. Uh, this couple between energy and smart system, uh, smart mobility, are very is very important. And and then you go also for other important part and another pillar, let's say, in smart cities, which is smart buildings. So if you go for mobility, energy, buildings and some other things also that are important, you get what the European Union is creating right now. They are putting together transport, they are putting together energy, and some other things like smart buildings or planning of the city itself. This is the, the, the basic that you could think that is good or not, but Europe is going this way, it's starting to go this way, and there are many other things like healthcare systems or education and the managing of everything together. So there is a new and challenging domain for work in our lives if we want to target on smart cities. In smart cities, you need to uh, be prepared to think big at the same time that you are uh, thinking small. This means that sometimes you are making applications for uh, controllers of the city, like uh, traffic controllers uh, that are there inside the city hall working for, for, for the city itself. Uh, sometimes you are dealing with citizens like uh, tourists, people, or young people, or this kind of persons. So this means uh, that the requirements are different, uh, and this means you need to describe and define when you are starting a project or starting a, an application to know which exactly is the uh, kind of user or target uh, uh, partnership that you are looking for. So this is very common in, in, in cities, and you find yourself going from one to another very frequently and moving in, in the two ways. There are other things in the city because you could be interested in building the city itself or giving methodologies or software or hardware for the city itself, while there are other points of view in which you go for the applications themselves. So it's not the same to endow the city with a uh, capability of knowing herself and growing and being managed itself. Uh, this is one focus, while another one is I want to make an application that is useful at some level of the city. So these two parts are also complementary to the small and big thing that we were uh, talking about one second ago. So, well, there are uh, many institutions, uh, companies and people working in Europe on uh, smart cities and they, again the picture is not been very clear, but people are uh, discussing on mobility most times, energy, living, uh, even people themselves. So uh, all this is being, let's say, standardized in at the level of Europe for working in a smart city. So there's a huge work already done there, even if it is starting right now, because there are many people working in this domain. So for example, there are things that we, we know that they exist, but they are mandatory in some cities, like the standards and the business models. I mean, they are, they are not secondary issues. They are very primary issues that you need to deal with when you are going for a city. Because the safety standards, the standards that the city is uh, having for deploying any kind of sensor in the, in, in the streets, or the kind of uh, quality of the software that you are delivering 
to the city itself. Uh, this cannot be done by uh, one single person just uh, after three months working on it. You need some planning and you, you need thinking big in the sense of who and where are using your applications. So that's very common in smart city. In, in Europe, there are priority areas and there are action clusters that are being created right now in these last couple of years for going for all these ideas, although there are many other people working in smart cities for a longer time, definitely in Europe and in the rest of the world. Well, uh, I should focus, focus a little bit on intelligence because I think that uh, even if you have very nice uh, devices and, and nice people working there, you need intelligence at many levels. You need a holistic intelligence. You need, you need to think in the technique. What are the algorithms you are using for these techniques? How are they being used? How they interrelate, how they interconnect each other? So this means you need in different kind of intelligence and you need different levels of intelligence. This is a complex pictures, I'm not telling you that much on this, but there are many levels and many structures out there for dealing for, with intelligence. And these are great news for people working on intelligent systems because there are many kinds of intelligent system and all of them fit into the smart city kind of work. So these are great news for, kind, for people working there as well as for people uh, looking for applications. So when you go for cities, you can find unique challenge. Some of them are large scale. Everything is large. So forget about making things quickly, making things with small data sets, uh, making your algorithm running on uh, 10 variables and forgetting testing the algorithm on 50 variables because you will arrive to 1 million variables easily. So this means a lot. Because when you make a paper in a journal, you go and present a result for instances of your problem of dimension 100, 1000, and that's it. Even people don't think on the scalability of their proposals. They propose an algorithm for one set of instances, and that's it. That's a bad idea, even in scientific, from the scientific point of view, and also especially from the point of view of smart cities. Because something that you will have granted in a smart city is that you always want more. You always have more data. You can solve a problem today and be satisfied, and the city is satisfied. But next year, in a few months, they will ask you to solve the problem 10 times larger. So if you don't think about the techniques you are using, you don't test them, you don't make a complexity analysis of them, you will fail. You will start over again next year. This is not a good idea. So large uh, scale and analysis of scale is very important. Time consuming is all over the place. For example, you need to simulate cities. What's the point there? Because uh, if you take decisions on the city without knowing what is going to happen, you will be in the statement in which we are right now. Many cities in the world are just taking decisions without knowing, without having any data, what is going to happen in the city. I will add a new road there. Should I make a new set of buildings there? Should I change this, the red lights of the city in this way? And, and, and this is risky, and this is the past. In the future, you need to know what is going to happen. And knowing what is going to happen is only partially related to time series forecasting or some other of these things. We need more complex uh, analysis of cities, and this means usually simulators. So this means you, because you, if, if you have an equation for something that is happening in the city, you are sure not to be solving the, the real problem, okay? because the real problems in the city are hardly modeled by equations. So it's something like, uh, it, I mean partially, I don't want to be extreme, but uh, uh, the simulation of the city is something that is challenging and that is the only way to tell you what is going to happen. So this takes time and it means you need to enter different domains of computer science, for example, like high performance computing, cloud computing, uh, GPUs computing in order to reduce your times. For sure you need to make your, your intelligence system more intelligent and more efficient. But also at the end you need something like uh, more powerful computers to deal with this. So I understand that many people don't want or don't have the time to go these ways. But if you are making actual impact, you aim at making actual impact in, in, in cities, you will be forced to do this. You cannot have a laptop on your table having eight cores and using just two of them, okay? That's something that cannot happen in the city because you are losing opportunities. You are not reacting 
uh, as quick as possible for modeling the city itself, for example, for asking what is going to happen next year or next day. This is another point, dynamicity, let's say dynamics of the city is very important. So everything is changing. You are used maybe to solve problems as an optimization researcher. I, I was used to solve problems in which you have everything down from the beginning to the end, and it's static. You go for the TSP problem, you go for the vehicular routing problem or whatever problem you may have, and from the beginning, you know the model of the problem, you know the data of the problem, you go solve it, the model and the data are static through the 10 minutes or one day or one week of solving that you are using, and then you solve the problem. This, we need to forget about it, because everything is changing in the city. So you might be solving problems that are no longer interesting for the city, because the, 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 the state of the city is changing continuously. So this is worthy for mobility, for health systems, for energy and consumption, smart metering, uh, uh, taking the energy of trams when they are breaking, whatever. This is changing all the time in, in the city, so dynamicity is, is something very important there. Uncertainty, this is also important. You have data, you have lost data, some of the data are not accurate, how do you deal with this? You, you have unbalanced data, but this is not a special. My point of view is this, we all know about some of these things, but the point is that here, nothing of this is special. This is uh, needed, this is basic. This is the point uh, for starting our proposal. So don't think in making something and later in two years making it dynamic, because, because we need to make it dynamic now, in your paper, in your applications of this year. So that's the point. Although, uh, if you don't make it, there are many other people in the world that will make it. That's, that's the point, being competitive. Uh, complex for sure, there are complex relations and interdependencies. Everything like so is there in the smart cities. You have several goals at the same time when you are solving problems in the city. So if you are used to solve a problem from one goal point of view, this is not enough. We are now in a domain in which people, decision makers and even citizens, they want to have alternatives, they want to consider different goals. When I go from home to work, I want to save fuel, I want to arrive in the uh, smaller amount of time, I want not to make uh, pollution in the city, and I want all of them together. And I want not only for me these things, I want them for all people. And we are in contradiction, because I can get some things, but if everyone in the city is getting the same things, the city is getting in trouble. And considering different criteria is not uh, easy, because there are lots of analysis and techniques, a way to go, scientifically speaking, on how to deal with several competing objectives in which you cannot give a precedence or a priority for one of them, because you are interested in all of them, and you don't know how. You don't know, sometimes people know, well, I want to arrive in a lower amount of time, it doesn't matter on the fuel consumption this time. Okay, you can create a, a problem for this, but the general settlement is not like this, it's much more complex. And uh, you have human preferences that we are used to forget when we are making uh, scientific work because we want the uh, scientific definition of problems. We don't want people telling us, this is very important for me, or this is not important for you. But in fact, when you go to Smart City, it is important, because the final users are regular people. So how to plug this information into your techniques, into your applications, that's very important. Uh, you have lots of restrictions. There are people used to solve problems with you, you made a model, linear model, mixed model, whatever model of a problem. You, you give something to get, something to optimize, minimize cost, maximize time of whatever, and benefits. And you have requirements, okay? And you are used to have 10 requirements, 20 requirements, 1,000 requirements. But still it's not enough. There are many applications in cities that go for lots of requirements. And requirements are hard because you, you it's difficult to find one single solution for a problem that is fulfilling all the requirements, even if the solution is bad. But just fulfilling requirements is very hard in, in real applications. So smart cities are full of these kind of problems. And uh, you have lots of, uh, I told you about technology, but finally you can visualize this as desktop computers or mobile phones or similar kind of uh, technology. So you need to know on REST web services, for example. You need to know on Android versus iOS. All these together, that's the point in the smart cities. In some applications, you can forget about some of them. But if you, if you want to make something for your city, and then as Europe demands from you 
to put the solutions to work in other cities of Europe, for example, you need to think in this, because when you are moving your solutions from your city in which everything is perfectly working after a lot of work, and then you move it to a different city, you cannot start from scratch. You need to know, you, you have to have an architecture, software or hardware that is going to match the other cities. So you go for minimum requirements for energy, or you go for minimum kits of sensors in which you don't have 10 uh, small devices plugged together. No, you have one kit that you take in your pocket and put it in Paris. That's uh, the idea when you are, for example, using sensors with the lighthouses uh, issues that we have now in, in Europe. So that's, that's something different. You can understand that we are having a different settlement when, when we are solving problems in, in smart cities. How are we approaching this? Well, we are using by SPAR techniques, which are very uh, weird kind of techniques. Uh, some, sometimes we use any kind of algorithm. We are not allergic to any algorithm. But uh, we, we found many applications for by SPAR techniques in which you are mimicking existing natural system, you plug them into a computer, and then the computer is solving the problem in a way that no one else can solve it. So the biological inspiration is just a funny and initial thing. Later, you need to beat a state of the art techniques. That's the real point. So we are, we, I mean, the community is not interested in your techniques until you make it better compared to the best and state-of-the-art techniques. That's the moment in which others get interested in how you made this advancement. That's the point. Bio-inspired techniques can often uh, offer this kind of thing. So we are using a part of heuristics. We are using a part of meta heuristic in which we learn how the techniques are uh, working. And then we have uh, different families of techniques that can solve this problem. I found that these techniques, either bio techniques or meteoristics are unique techniques for facing many of the problems you have here. As I told you, I don't forget on any existing techniques because we are using branch and bound, we are using simplex, we are using uh, traditional Newton or gradient or Levenberg Marquardt or second derivatives or whatever it is needed in, in, the, in the applications. But when you go big, uh, this means you need to think in all the kind of techniques that are taking you to actual applications. So exhaustive techniques usually are, you need to forget about them, it's like going blind in the city, solving problems. When you get uh, to advanced techniques in which you have knowledge on the problem, etc., et you get uh, well-known techniques that are working, but still they are a little bit uh, limited. And then meteoristics many times make the difference. You can not find a solution for big problems at all, when you arrive to meteoristics, you can have a solution, and then you can improve on it. It's something like the infinite jump. You go from zero to something, and then you are able of improving this something. That's the point, okay? But the jump from zero to one is not the same as from one to two, okay? That's the main point. When you have no solution to a problem in the city and you provide a solution, you made a big breakthrough, and then lots of other people or yourself, you can improve it by changing the techniques or whatever. But this is not the same, okay, until you make a similar step that this sometimes happens also. Well, this means that uh, there are many problems that other can solve, and with meteorists, we can solve some of these problems. That's one of the visions we are having in the group there, and there are many other people working with us in this point of view. So we know many techniques, but we usually go for the ones that are more efficient and more accurate. That's the point of view we are facing there. The, the biological inspiration, like evolutionary algorithms or whatever, is just one way to go. There are many other ways to go for solving the problems. And uh, they are full of set of things. You have inspiration from some existing part of the nature or, or your experience. You inspire yourself in your, in your past, what you know, or in nature. But this is different. We go for computer programs. Okay, so you have a, a, a computer solving the problems. You need to know about the mathematics, and then you need to know about how it is implemented. There are many people renouncing to the software part of this. You want to solve problems in a computer by doing programs, but you don't want to apply the traditional and well-known software engineering issues. That's, again, a problem, especially in cities. Because, for example, if you are working in a company and you are getting a contract, to a, a city, many cities in, in Europe and in, in the world only will make a contract to you if you have a minimum level 
of CMMI. Okay, so if you know CMMI, if you don't know CMMI and you want to deal with organizations, you better really quickly go and learn about it. And then there are five levels there. At least you are requested to have three of them, the three basic ones. Okay, that's a usual requirement, nothing special. That's been done in the world for many years. This is about the requirement of software. You have a very interesting intelligent system and you plan to put it in the city, forget about it. If the city is a big one or have regulations concerning safety and what you have there, there are many of these things. So you better learn about how to make good programs because you are making programs. It's like being a medical doctor without knowing medicine. Okay, I can make an operation quite quickly and, and uh, in a very successful manner, yeah, but you don't have a degree on, on um, medical system, um, on medical uh, operations, so you are not allowed by the system. And that's the, the way to go when you are creating software. If you are creating software in any manner because you have nice PhD students and you know a little bit on how to make nice programs, it's okay, but you need to fulfill other professional requirements, that's the point. Well, there are many things there. Well. Uh, this means usually uh, dealing with parallelism in order to speed up your application, hybridizing techniques, you need to know lots of techniques, uh, going multi-objective, this means a lot, because how to compare multi-objective techniques, how to make decisions based on Pareto fronts, how to take decisions on areas of the solution that you, from the beginning, gave to the uh, technique you are using, all this is really complex. You need to master different kind of uh, domains and dynamism that's important there's a whole domain only focusing on dynamic problems this means that you have applications you have advanced solutions and you have techniques that you are proposing so as you can see uh, you need to plan this you need to uh, learn on this and decide where are you putting your effort and your preferences in all this domain it's not something that you can make from today to tomorrow you need to think about it and plan for many years whether you are entering projects, people, knowledge about this domain. Well, there are lots of other things like you can imagine complex system, neural networks and all things that you can find also there in the system. So you cannot be allergic to anything. You cannot say, I know on this kind of techniques, I don't want to know on this other technique. It's, uh, it, it's worse for you, this is bad for you because other people knowing about the two techniques will make a better approach for the smart city. So that's a problem and you are forced to know about many different things. There are lots of applications in cities, um, I don't know, transportation, physics, bioinformatics, uh, communications in the city, communication between the cars of the city, there are many applications there. And in order to move from one to another, you need to have, a, 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 let's say, a fast learning curve, okay? You need people uh, learning very quickly on all these topics, there are many. That's one point also. There are uh, many precedences on publications, on the techniques and the applications, so you are sure to uh, win in this domain. I mean, there are many issues you can solve and put your results on journals, as, uh, as well as you can go for companies and interact to them, because many of them are interested in, in this kind of applications, and many of them are just focusing on getting a contract to the city in order to deal with transportation or parking system for four years, 10 years, or whatever, or any, any time with the city. So there's a big uh, interest from every single point of view. What I'm telling you now quickly is about some of the results we already had and, and to give some glimpse of applications, uh, the kind of applications we have been doing. Romi, for example, is one of the projects we had in, in a small city. Uh, one of the things we want to, go to, to do in a small city is to try to help the traffic system of the city. So when you think in a city and the traffic uh, on the city, uh, there's a big problem in, for many cities in the world there. Uh, you, you can imagine about uh, putting sensors or making uh, changes in the city to solve the traffic problems. But there are still a lower level uh, approach for this, which is let's try to use the existing infrastructure of the city the, in an optimal way. Because maybe the infrastructure now existing in your city is not used in an optimal way. So this is one way to go. In this case, we were trying to analyze the city the complete city, not two cross crosses or, or uh, three roundabouts, which is the, the, the target of many applications and journal papers today. We are not aiming this, we aim the whole city. 
So we take into account all the red lights in the city, all regulations in the city, all the patterns of traditional movement in the city at different moments, rush hours, uh, regular work hours, regular hours with no problem at all, uh, weekends, vacations, and take all these together and try to set optimally the time in red for the uh, traffic lights. That's a huge problem. We got some solutions in, in, in one of the previous projects and we are going this way also in the existing one. This means a lot. This means knowing on the maps there. This means having a simulator and having an algorithm that is asking to the map and, and, and the patterns of movements of people in the city. And then, then needs lots of technological issues because you need to know uh, uh, usual uh, starting point, end points, uh, when you are in roundabouts and crosses, where are people mostly going, in which direction. We are aiming even at knowing at a microscopic level what is happening in the city. What is every single car doing in the city? So that's very complex. But there are approaches in which you can know more on the streets, you can know more on the cars that, you, that are passing along the streets. And there are many applications, for example, this is an example based on particle swarm, which is based on the on swarms of birds, how they behave. Based on this idea, you can create algorithms that can beat all the rest of algorithms in this area. In fact, this is not still well known because no one is daring to go for a whole city for no problem. That's a, an initial step because just going for a small problem that is taking care of all city means a lot. Okay, so you need infrastructure, people, time, and all that. This is one of the applications, and we can prove that in Malaga and in many other places. We can make it better compared to the times for people, pollution of people, the emissions in the city. We can reduce, help to reduce the emissions in the city by controlling the time in red of the semaphores, of the red lights. Okay? That's, uh, you don't need to invest in the infrastructure of the city. You just need to improve it to use it in a more intelligent way. That's the only. Well, we have another approach uh, based on roads. So we have some spots that are taking data from uh, cars or even from your smartphone, from Bluetooth or from uh, Wi-Fi connections. Then as you pass by these sensors, you can leave information, get information from there. Uh, you can have 3G connection to a central server, which is creating a, a model of the city. So we have, in, the, in my laboratory in Malaga, we, have a, we are creating the model of the city itself. The, better, the, the, the more time, the better the model. And then you can take decisions online and better for the whole city, as well as for one single driver. So the route for going from A to B is not the same for all drivers going from A to B, like Google or TomTom could tell you. It depends on yourself. It depends on the city itself. It depends what is better for the city in order to uh, uh, avoid traffic jams. We don't want traffic jams. We, we want uh, free traffic flowing. That's the point. So we have uh, simulators, we have data, and we have algorithms regulating and taking data and, and, and creating solutions. We have analysis depending on the time of, uh, of the type of vehicles. We are using standards for the pollution of the vehicles, and we can solve these problems uh, in the city. To make people go for, I mean, you have a route, when you arrive to the cross, depending on how the traffic is, they advise you how to go, right? And if you have accidents or similar uh, uh, events in the city, they will spread you in the city in a way that you are not provoking additional traffic jams. That's, that's the point there. So we have this not only for Malaga, we have this for many different cities in the world, especially in Europe and also in America, and also in uh, cities where the traffic is not, um, uh, like in many countries, is not ha uh, right-hand side, okay? So, so you know that in the UK and many other, some other countries in the world, the traffic is on the other way. So this means a little bit a uh, change, but not that much, okay? But we already shown that this is working also in all these countries. So roads are a way to go, dynamic roads, and, and a solution exists for many different uh, cities, like Paris or Berlin or uh, Stockholm, for example. I don't have to be hanging here. Uh, so what, what we are analyzing is the emissions, the CO, CO2, and the other kinds of emissions that you have. Some of them are predictions. Some of them are ways of redu reducing these emissions. Some of them are based on existing uh, data on the traffic on the cities. If 
it doesn't exist, we go and try to predict what is the performance of different kind of traffic scenarios there. We go for very different kind of uh, wild uh, patterns of traffic from regular one to very wild ones in order to, sh to show that this is working in different cities. There are many other ways to go like vehicle to vehicle uh, interaction. So it's, it's nice to see in the cities that you can interact to others, that you can foresee that they are in the same crossroads as you are. So try not to have any accident to these guys. It's also very interesting to create a distributed file system in order to share information or files or photos or videos of what you're doing there. Probably not only for the driver, but also for the entertainment of people in the car. So we already have a, a couple of games for children going in the cars and interacting through Wi-Fi between them because they are in cars, right? And, uh, and these, these games are different from the kind of games you are used to because they are thought to, uh, to, to be used by people that are side by side in a long trip or in the same location of the city. So this is an extremely hostile environment for communications. Everything is changing. You have lots of interferences and getting over all these things is really difficult to do. But this can be done even with commodity devices. So if you think that you can solve these problems by, uh, by buying an equipment that is 1,000 euro, for example, for a regular driver, so you are thinking probably not in the right way because not every single person in a city is going to buy uh, something that is costing 1,000 euros just because they want to be in contact to others or whatever. So we are aiming at commodity devices, regular smartphones, right? The, one, the ones we have and the regular things you already have in, in the car. For sure, if you put, for example, like, uh, an additional antenna outside the car, communications are, are much better. This can be done easily for regular people because a Bluetooth antenna is not expensive and it will improve dramatically your uh, application experience there. Otherwise, you can go 3G and then you can use the traditional internet access of your smartphone. And there are many things you can do there. Lampposts are very special places in the cities. Now in lampposts you can put sensors, you, can, you have uh, electricity, you can plug your devices there. They are uh, all over the city, so you can make many things with lampposts. Well, uh, optimization is all over the place. The communication protocols that you are using, like TCP, IP, or whatever special protocol like uh, IEEE uh, 11P protocol, for example, all these protocols, when you put them to work in the city, the default situation is that they don't work, right? So you need to optimize even the parameter, the parameters of the protocols that you are using for the communication. So you might be creating a perfect application based on internet connections, but if you are aiming ad hoc connectivity, you need even to optimize the protocol sending packages between these ad hoc devices, our normal uh, smartphone devices. And this again, needs uh, uh, an analysis, you need an S2, an S3, you need real tests to know whether your laboratory tests are matching the existing one. You need to think about what are you taking account in, in your, from a technical point of view, what are you optimizing, what are you looking for? That's also a very important part. You need to take care usually today on sustainability. That's very important for cities. If you make something but you don't explore the sustainability part of your application, you will probably fail in a few years. So much better you're thinking how you will save and, co and, and collaborate to the sustainability of your city in the future with your application. We make real tests. So this is actually Malaga. We, I send my students there in Malaga with the cars uh, very safely in, in all cases, taking data and, and, and validating the results we have in the laboratory in the city itself. Because if you don't go to the actual city, you won't see the bad things that usually happen when you are making these kind of things. So it's very important that you go real. So forget about, about being all time in your laboratory. You need to go outside and make things actually in the city itself. Uh, we are dealing with panels in, in, in some projects. Where to locate the panels? What are the panels telling you? For example, for the traffic, are you telling people where to go in roads from, uh, in these panels? Are you advertising something for, uh, for the city itself? when you are not using the panels for traffic management. There are many things there. Where to put the panels? How many of them? Because they are usually expensive. Where are you locating the panels? That's uh, one way to go. 
uh, smart panels is one way to go. Um, uh, public domain, public transport is very important also. So we are trying to, to get some information from the bus system and offer some new services for, for buses. For example, we are creating an application that is automatically going with you in your smartphone and uh, knowing about the networks in the buses. Well, in, in Malaga, in, all, the, all buses are having internet connection. Right, so so you have buses with with uh, Wi-Fi there inside, so you can detect when you are inside the bus. The, the bus, you can uh, detect how much time you are there, which is your profile, your history. Uh, you can foresee where are you going to. Uh, you can make uh, gamification. You can make rankings of people going a lot for public transport. This is cool. This is good for them because they are saving uh, for all of us. So. Uh, gamification is a way to go. You, you make rankings, put them on web pages, and it's, if you can, you make some awards in terms of whatever, a ticket for going to theater, cinema, whatever. And these kind of things will help to the uh, success of your application. So in public transport, that's very common. And of course, there are, there are many things you can do also connecting to the uh, stops of the buses. And in fact, we are analyzing also the synchronization of the buses themselves, because the synchronization of the whole fleet is the important thing. Not just that only the delay between the visits, but the uh, variance in the delays of visits. So uh, people there are very interested, and in many other cities. We, we have been working there for a couple of years. And electrical vehicles, that's very common. There are many problems like this one. Where are you putting in my city the charge points for the electrical vehicles in order to have maximum uh, battery uh, life for um, for people, uh, maximum, minimum, medium for people having electrical vehicles in the city. There are many companies wanted to make there, many Japanese companies, for example, we know we are in contact to many of them. You have here Volvo in Europe, we have many companies also. Uh, are they interested in where to locate these kind of things for electrical vehicles, other kind of applications, parking places? Can we know on uh, free uh, parking places in the city automatically. Can we create the, the, the spot for you? What, what, can we locate a spot for you in downtown if you are going to downtown? Can you pay before going downtown and just arrive there, leave your car and go and make your business? That's one interesting point of view. So we are analyzing city from this point of view. We are making applications for uh, Android in order to ease uh, parking places and a smart parking flow in the city itself, with minimum investment from the point of view of the city itself. We are dealing with communications, on, uh, we are in contact to policemen, so at some moment we will make some arrangements for, this is starting, for uh, signals, for connecting them to others, and for warning on something that they want safely uh, in the city, because that's very important. Knowing about accidents, that's also interesting, making uh, small Android applications reporting accidents by themselves or by yourself. For the city, uh, they have floating cars. In Malaga, for example, they, from time to time, every week, they are making uh, some, uh, some roads by themselves, they, they have many, and they explore the time uh, they spend in every single street. When they are stopped in a street, they write down why they are stopping there. And, and they analyze the, the times and the total amount of uh, travel distance. And they are doing this in a, in a manual manner. So we are trying to create applications that are doing this automatically. And this is very common in many cities of the world. Energy buildings are much more is possible there. We have some experience in, in wind farms uh, layout uh, for maximizing the energy generated there. Uh, with people, for example, in Argentina, in which they have lots of winds. In the south of Argentina, they have big places. Also in Spain, it's very important. Gamesa is one of the well-known uh, companies in the world on uh, wind farms. Uh, disaggregation at home. You are uh, uh, consuming energy at home, but uh, can you make it better? Could you have a feedback of what is happening at home and have a tool in your laptop or in your mobile phone helping you to reduce your consumption of energy daily, profiles of clients, distinguishing automatically in which appliances of your home are being used this energy. That's uh, disaggregation. That's very interesting also. Uh, it's a future market. Uh, smart lightning, we are just, well, this is already done in Malaga. There are some places in which you can um, self-adapt the lighting of the streets 
because of the moment or because of the number of people there moving along the streets. That's not so simple because there are even safety in, uh, issues there, not because you are falling if you don't have lights, but also because if you leave a street because they have no people, if you leave a street completely dark because there are no people there, you are promoting uh, problems with, with, uh, you know, with uh, the bad guys there, right? So, so there is a minimum uh, intensity of, of lights that you need in every single neighborhood. Okay? You cannot go down of, of, of it. So there are some things in smart lightning already done there. Not difficult. Uh, jet systems for the water, automatic, uh, automatically starting and, and stopping and remotely stopping the wet system, depending on the weather, the humidity, the temperature, you have small sensors and you can start, stop, uh, stop all, all things. This is not implemented. We are going for this kind of system, although small things can be done and have been done there. Uh, residual gatherings, we are making a forecasting of the containers levels in order to uh, save the visits of the uh, tracks to remove the, resi the residuals. Okay, so you for forecast how much containers are filled or how much they are going to smell and then you go and you remove them if they are on appropriate levels for this. Then you can save money because you are not making routinary all the routes inside the city, only when this is important or needed. That's one point in residual gathering. So you can improve a lot there. We have some data from other parts of Spain, in the south of Spain, near uh, Gibraltar and Algeciras, Seville, and all this part. Also, we have data there for making this. Smart buildings, it's important there. We have uh, some, some knowledge about it because there are some tools that uh, convert this abstraction into one building, which is amazing. So you, you can uh, define the building itself, uh, the, the, the rooms you have, the orientation, the, the kind of windows, uh, the materials you are using, the stuff. Then you can define things. You can know the energy and how to best build this. Even you can plug inside aesthetic issues. So uh, architectures are very interested in using this kind of technology based usually in bio-inspired techniques. There's a well-known software named Grasshopper, which is helping people to build new buildings and uh, create innovative ways and uh, shapes even for the, for the buildings. So uh, we already did this in collaboration to some people and, and you know, they are, uh, these guys in this domain are trying all time to get awards and to get uh, grants for building, an actual building in different cities. They apply all time. They need automatic tool for creating innovative buildings. So they, they get the idea and then they make final changes for sure. Not everything is automatic, but the tool can help them. And many techniques can be used there for creating uh, smart buildings. Tourism is very important, so uh, we are aiming at making some applications for telling you how are the museum and the, the, the restaurants, the bars and the public places you might when, why, uh, want to go in order not to make uh, any queue, not to wait until you enter there. You can plan your visit to Malaga. If you arrive in a ship in the morning and you are leaving in the afternoon, uh, we are aiming at planning you the day in a perfect manner so that you enjoy the city without standing there in lines because you want to enter the Picasso Museum. So there are some of these ideas we are planning and we are going from the point of view of the tourism. This again is based on, on uh, sensors or at least the collaboration to people because they are using your application and uh, the application can know uh, how can, uh, let's say, uh, give an estimation of what is happening there, automatically or with the intervention of, of, of the user itself. And there are lots of applications there, I cannot tell you that many there. Uh, QRs, there are uh, things we're, we're, doing, we're doing with uh, drones, although that's very difficult. I mean, going, uh, controlling drones automatically and helping, just helping drones follow policemen when they are entering a house or making some intervention in the city. That's a huge amount of, of, of work. But it is worth because it's very interesting to see your techniques working in, in this nice domain of the drones. We have maps. So we have intelligent maps of cities. We have a maps of energy in the city, a map of heating in the, in, in the city. We have maps of sm smellings in the city. We have maps of how the city is working normally, how the city is working right now. And so there is a, a side way to go in which you are collecting information and just putting them on maps. That's it. It's not intellectually 
are technically very difficult sometimes, but you give a big uh, contribution to citizens when you make them aware of what is actually happening in the city from unexpected point of view, like noise. You can give people an idea of what is the noise in the streets of the city, these kind of things, or the quality of the air. We have a project in which we try to know the quality of the air in the streets of the city. And this depends on the height. It's not the same when you are at two meters. It's not like if you are in a 10th floor, something similar, 30 meters above the street. So for people having allergies that cannot breathe properly and these kind of things, that's very interesting to know. Uh, well, drones, though, for example, helping the fire firemen uh, uh, to, to mitigate a, a fire in the city, entering or taking pictures or taking temperatures of the whole building, making a map and uh, supporting the, the, the building. That's very interesting also. So army intelligence is interesting there. And you, will, you, you don't have this kind of, uh, you don't need to stop the traffic because you are putting there a crane or something similar, which is big. You stop some lanes in the city. No problem for people there. You don't need to jump I'm there because the drone is taking the data, for example, and you are intelligently, uh, uh, let's say, manipulating the data that the drone is sending to you. There are many things in, we are, well, Rome is one of the projects we, we finished. You can go there and you will find some small problems already defined, papers, example, data files that you can for free use, no problem. You just cite the work in which uh, they were presenting and, and that's it. So we have, we are, we are, Definitely going for public utility of things. We are fund, fundly, um, our funds are most time public, many cases public, so we return to the public domain what we do. So we have many things, let's say, in our web pages. They are not, uh, let's say, uh, static pages. We put a lot of things and we offer knowledge and data and tools, software tools for using. That's, that's a little bit of point. Well, so, well, we have, uh, now we are engaged in a problem in which we are uh, giving better routes to everyone, depending on the situation of the city and depending on your profile, your needs, and taking into account the pollution. And the, the, the traffic lights is being true right now, this year. So we are happy because we are using actual data and actual people from the cities are working with us to tell us what is important, what is not important. Because sometimes, as I scientific, you think that some things are important, and at the end, they are not. So this is important also interacting to, to real people. We have an European initiative, a small one, just to go this way, holistically thinking in the intelligence of the city. Uh, this is just an idea of getting together. It's not uh, something serious like a project. Uh, there are many things in the marketplace. We are trying to get uh, into the marketplace and the proposals. We are, well, there are many rankings of cities, and in fact, we are creating uh, maps of open data in the world. So we will deliver and, and release this kind of information soon for anyone using this information for free. And in summary, there are many challenges in the smart cities. You need to think in the uh, applications, on the techniques, you need to think on the scale, on politics, and uh, making things professionally speaking and informally speaking for the users. So it's a mix of contradictory things at the end. Uh, so we are really open for collaborations, for ideas, for sharing information, for receiving people there, sending uh, our students to any other part, finding PhDs or postdocs or whatever in common projects. Uh, we are really open, that's Malaga. We are over, over here and you are invited to go there whenever you want. The airport is easy to fly and there are nice communications. There is a technological part full of companies from Malaga from other parts of Spain and Europe and the world. And uh, the harbor is working properly, mostly uh, there are many interesting things there in the city. And as I told you, you are always welcome there. And I think that's all. Thank you.